Okay, they're all in. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Village of Washingtonville Village Board Work Session today, Monday, January 4th. If we could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy you too. Happy New Year. I know this year is going to be a lot less hectic, I think, than last year, but we'll, we'll see. A couple of announcements. Um, on behalf of the Village of Washingtonville community, the Board of Trustees and I want to thank Chief Hearn for his many years of service he has given to all of us as a volunteer firefighter and as the fire chief of Monell Fire Company for the last three years. We are grateful and deeply appreciate, appreciate the time you have spent away from your family to assure the safety of our community. Congratulations on a job well done. I also want to give congratulations to Mr. Brian Bates, who will assume the, the position of fire chief for Monell. JCO, our water operators, have started to read meters. Uh, Facebook posting today mentioned they should have a vest with the name of the company. They do. They have sweatshirts that say JCO, and they also have ID badges. Please feel free to contact the Village Hall if you have any questions uh, regarding uh, the meter readers. Other criticisms that have come to my attention is why we have a private company for sewer. Answer, our, our licensed operator had resigned from the Village many years ago. Giving to the assistant at the time, they were unable to pass the state test that's required by the Department of Environmental Conservation. We had no choice. One of the, uh, on the water end, I was told by their union business person that at the time they wanted more money per hour for the water department. We said no, and we went to JCO for um, leadership for the water department. Okay, we took the remaining people who, from the water and sewer and brought them over to the DPW, knowing that we have so much work to do throughout the village. I also want to give um, DPW, uh, congratu congratulations for a job well done over this past storm. Uh, I can't tell you how many people have texted me. I just received two other texts in the past half hour of a job well done. So um, my hat goes off to DPW. Uh, they're always there for us when, uh, when we need them. Um, the Lions Den Memorial Park musical garden equipment will be installed in late March. It arrived a couple of weeks ago. The weather turned bad very quickly. So uh, it's going to be installed, uh, like I said, in late March. The equipment is part of the new garden that was installed this year at Memorial Park uh, for the Lions Den. Day for our first budget hearing will be Monday, January 11th at 7 p.m. It's a preliminary budget given to the board for their review and comment. Our second meeting has been scheduled for Monday, January 18th at 7 p.m. As of now, these meetings will be scheduled at the Village Hall, but could change to a Zoom meeting uh, at any time. I will notify everyone via Facebook uh, of this decision by week's end. If you have any questions regarding the budget, please feel free to email me at mayor at washingtonville-ny.gov. All questions will be addressed. Trying to schedule a special meeting with Delaware Engineering with solutions to our water sewer billing. I will post on the Village Facebook page when this meeting will be held. I've been told that not everyone has Facebook. You wouldn't think that, but everyone, um, everyone who doesn't have Facebook can get on to our homepage all Facebook postings roll over to our Village of Washingtonville homepage. Uh, great news, Officer Mendez and Jax satisfactorily completed the narcotics detection school last week and now are certified. Uh, there's a ceremony on Friday at 10 a.m. in Goshen. Uh, there 
will be a few detected demonstrations. I, along with the chief um, and many other departments in the area, uh, I saw a live demonstration. They put um, a scent of a narcotic on a patch on a sticky, um, I don't know if it was a sticky note, Chief, you could jump in. Um, and the dog found both of them. It's really interesting uh, how they react when they do find it. Uh, they constantly barking, they sit, and it's almost like they're pointing here, here, here. So um, great news for our Washingtonville uh, Police Department. Thank you, Chief, for your leadership uh, with them. Uh, going to our agenda, we have a um, presentation regarding a new phone system at the police department. Um, and that's given by Mr. Keith Studd, president of ITC. Um, hello, Keith, how are you? Good, Mayor, how are you today? I'm doing well, hope everyone is well. Everyone as well. Uh, the floor is yours. Great. So I'm going to share my screen in a second, but I've been speaking with the chief. And certainly, uh, as you recall, uh, from, the, from the village perspective, we've, we've talked about doing an upgrade throughout the village uh, for some time now. And, and uh, we've kind of engaged with the chief uh, on his side because of you know, kind of safety concerns of the, the longevity of the existing equipment. So we put together this proposal to share with you guys and, and kind of go through. I, I don't want to, um, I'll spend as much time as, as you'd like, but certainly uh, uh, the chief does have a copy of this in paper form that hopefully he's distributed. If not, he'll, I'll make sure we get a copy to everyone on this. And let me just uh, share my screen here. Um, I think Larissa, you may have to give me the permission to share my screen. So while she's doing that, just uh, to give you some background, you know, we've been we've been maintaining the police station really since it was uh, evolved many, many years ago, once they first moved in there uh, back all the way around, I think, 2002, believe it or not. And uh, we uh, we had a, a system in there for a few years, more than a few years. And we had the same type of quandary where. The, the equipment got antiquated and somewhere around, we say circa 2009, we upgraded the equipment and replaced it to what it is today. So we've had that equipment out there for, for some time now. And as you know, it runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So great, I can share my screen now, let me share it. And let me know if you can see uh, this proposal page. Yes. 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 Great. So what I, what I want to do is uh, I, I'll spend about uh, 10 minutes going through uh, this proposal and, and some, I do have some, some diagrams and then some obviously the, the financial aspect of all of this as well. But this is a criteria from which we've developed our proposal with the chief and, uh, and certainly with the village. It's not just a, a, a small sighted to just the police department. You know, obviously the master plan, I think at some points to have all the, the locations connected and this still uh, meets that requirement. So the current Awatsu system is manufactured discontinued for, for many years. That's the system that's in place there today. The system itself is no longer any under any maintenance agreement with us, which means when you call us, everything is best effort and time material um, at current rate. So there is no, uh, no coverage there whatsoever. As I mentioned, the village vision is to have a single system connecting all the locations, which includes village hall, police, and DPW to create a three digit dialing, transferring, and really one system just geographically dispersed. Um, there was some discussion and, and there still may be, uh, certainly that the PD may sometime move maybe to the second floor of village hall. And certainly we took that into consideration uh, along you know, within this proposal. And, and uh, we need certainly to control our expenses. We, we get it, obviously I'm a member, member of the community, expenses are important to everybody. And so we, we think we've addressed that as well. Um, there is no auto attendant or voicemail on the existing system. So voicemail is obviously commonplace in any business communication system and certainly in, in most police departments. 
uh, and certainly not existent within the current system at all today. So certainly uh, kind of a bare bones platform that we have. Frontier Communications is the carrier. They're the people that provide the actual dial tone to and from the system today. And we've got uh, you know roughly about 14, what we call analog lines connected to the system. Um, and I've listed them, what each of the functions are, but we've got a main number and some what we call rollovers. We've got some private lines for the chief and some sergeant detective lines. And, and then we've got dedicated lines, some of which we've, we've already identified that are antiquated and can be, and can be disconnected. Uh, I do mention that uh, we were provided some billing to help our, our financial story here, but uh, we don't have all of the numbers listed on the account that we provided. Uh, so it may even be better than what we, we show here. So not all the numbers li live on the one account number that we have, and you'll see where that plays in when, when we talk about the financial aspect of this. Uh, AT&T is your long distance provider. Uh, having voicemail for key people within the PD would be useful. Um, we do make record, uh, Goose Town is the name of the company that does the recording for the, uh, for the police department and the first uh, lines are recorded. The main list number and the rollovers are recorded today with specialized hardware and the service agreement and such that you have in place with, with Goose Town. Um, the current infrastructure is, is obviously antiquated and it's not ready for next generation voice deployment as is. So the cabling is, is antiquated. Uh, so we need to certainly address that as we put a new system in on an old product. The requirement is, uh, as far as equipment is limited, there's only about 10 phones. Uh, I've listed them there from dispatch all the way to the conference room. We do have a, what we call a little door box, uh, intercom in the lobby. There's actually two boxes if you've been to the police department. There's one outside, that's what we call a ring down that's connected to a dedicated outside line from Frontier that when you pick up the phone, it rings either inside the dispatch. And if dispatch isn't there, I think it call forwards to 911. I think Chief, you can clarify that. Um, and the door box inside is if people were able to get inside and there's no one at dispatch, you can press the button, it will ring throughout uh, the, the, uh, the department itself. So um, we're not addressing the outside door box today, although it's something we, we could address. I know it's a little beat up and whatnot, uh, but we, we left it on the existing line uh, that, that's there today. Um, and we'll talk about that as far as the financial aspect if we were to make some changes. Certainly we wanna have a system that's gonna meet our needs that we have today, but able to grow with us. We'd like to have a single point of contact. So when we have a problem, it's not who should I call? Is it this company, this company, this company? One number to call. Change is difficult. You've had this system since 2009. So training is a big part of uh, you know, this um, to provide you know, how to people, how to use the, the, the tools and the investment that the village is, is make, you know, putting in place here. We want to limit our capital expenditures and we can do this uh, by fixing our costs if possible. So these are the, the project overview from which we developed this, this proposal. Uh, Chief, was there anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, I think when we go to the overview, I think we can add a couple key points to it. Okay. So, so our goal, and, I, and let me just switch to, uh, you know, to make this a little bit more interesting is, you know, our goal is to you know, get, you, get you into the 21st century, right? So, you know, we're, we're deploying what we call a cloud-based system, which means there's real, there's no call control or no equipment that you're necessarily investing in at, at the police department. Everything lives in the cloud. I think we kind of understand a little bit how that works. The cloud is, you know, the internet and the data centers associated with the internet. So, our, our product is, is a product called Zoltus Cloud Services. It lives in the cloud. Um, Clearfly is a provider that we use for some faxing. And then in this case, we're using Spectrum to kind of connect down into the police department. So we've got these 10 phones that look similar to what you have today. And certainly, as I mentioned, we train the staff on how to use them. We've got that intercom door box that we spoke about. And then we have obviously the fax. Some interesting things about this slide is, is number one is just like before, we're isolating your, your data network. So there's no IT involvement whatsoever. There's no concerns about uh, you know, a virus or anything that's connecting to the, uh, to the existing equipment. This is completely separate from the existing data network 100%. We're also tr trying to eliminate as much as possible the antiquated POTS lines from Frontier. Uh, and the reason why is because we're cloud-based, we're always answering the call, right? Regardless of what's happening on the pole, what's happening within the building, 
uh, whether that's power related or God forbid a fire or even a flood um, or frontier. We've had instances where frontier has been down for, for quite some time. Everything that we do is outside of the building. So we have, although the phones may not work if we have a power outage or the building's non-existent, but we're still answering the call. We're still able to uh, take a voicemail message. We're still able to allow key people like the chief to run an application on his cell phone to make and receive phone calls as though he's in the office, even though he's not there. So it, it really addresses that business continuity disaster recovery that we just never, never had in place. And certainly we dovetail this to the overall village, you know, when, when the time comes that we, we add the village to this. So it, it, it's a nice little slide. We still have our dedicated lines for some of the things that are, are still existent. So if we still have Frontier, unfortunately, for some things, but it does give us a chance to kind of look at what are we using those dial tones for? Because anytime we can eliminate them, we eliminate that expense too. So this kind of gives a, a nice snapshot of what the overall look looks kind of looks like. Um, do you have any questions on this? I know it may be a little technical. If any questions I can answer on this before I go into the benefits of why we're doing what we're doing? I have one question. Um, how many mobile users? I know you mentioned the chief, but how many in total would have a, you know the ability to use the uh, mobile device? Yeah, so we're, we're licensed right now to the number of phones. So we have 10 phones, we have 10 users, uh, but certainly we can expand that to whatever capacity you want but there is a, an expense to do that based upon the requirement. So, you know- Part two. <laughs> yeah, how, how big is the expense? Well, it, so it depends. So, uh, you know, we can, if we're just talking about a mobile user, I can certainly get that for you. Uh, okay. But there's two things, actually two areas where we feel that it might add on to this. That might be one. If, if you decide to have more mobile users than you have actual users in the system, uh, and the other is uh, around the actual, um, you know, voicemail boxes. So again, we we give voicemail to every phone or user on the system. You have ten, you've got ten voicemail boxes. But you know, I think the chief will agree. We probably don't want to give voicemail to everybody within the department. But there may be others that you might want to add, and certainly we can add those. Um, and once we know what that, if there's an account, we can provide a quote around that too. So. Okay. Any other? Like what are the positive things is if you remember in August of uh, last year Frontier had a fire at their building which our emergency lines were down so were the 911 center lines I'm thinking this 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 application would not allow us to go down mm -hmm. so we can make phone calls from our station and we can also receive phone calls into our station that that's correct so so if, if in that instance where Frontier was down um, you know, you could at any time, and you don't have to wait for it to be down, you can actually run an application on your iPhone or your Android device that kind of mimics your phone in the office. So you could make multiple calls at the same time. So, you know, you could answer one call, put another call on hold, grab a second call, all from your cell phone. You could, you know, park a call and, and transfer it. You could even do a conference call. All the things that you can do in the office, you can do from your mobile device. Now, it is an app, right? And with that, it's, it's, not necessarily as intuitive as the phone in your office. So mm -hmm. different cultures will accept that a little bit easier than others, right? So uh, if, if uh, you're not familiar with using apps and, you, and you've and you never ordered a coffee from Dunkin', you're gonna have a little bit of a challenge, right? But here, um, others might acclimate to it very quickly. Okay. What's Clearfly? So, and I'll see that when we break it down. So Clearfly, one of the things that we we're talking about, again, is to eliminate as much as we possibly can the, the POTS or the dial tone associated with Frontier. Clearfly, in, in our example, is a carrier, a cloud carrier that's providing our fax service. So again, we're providing, what you know, we're still allowing, uh, they, we basically eliminated one line because they don't need it anymore. The other is their fax machine. So they can still load paper in the fax machine and send a fax like they have a line there. They can still have faxes come out of the fax machine, but because it's cloud-based, we can also have their faxes delivered to email or they can send their faxes from email, all for a price point lower than typically you're paying for your actual dial tone today. So that's what Clearfly is used for, just that one element of the, the fax. Do we, uh, do we need a Frontier or can we eliminate them at some point? That was my question. Yeah, so if we go back to the proposal, and, and there's we've def, we've we've highlighted uh, the the actual phone lines that are dedicated. So 
to give you an idea, these are the lines that are we, we've addressed that are dedicated. So there's uh, the 1725, which I believe is connected to the recording system. Now, again, some of this may be um, legacy, right? Because now, you know, the recording system probably had years ago a modem, right? And you dial in for the tech from Goosetown to go and program it. Now it's potentially internet based. So this number may or may not be used, but we would not know that we'd have to go to, you know, in this case, Goosetown. We have uh, a number that was connected to, again, this, this is going back to our notes, going back to as early as 2002, right? We had a phone number, uh, 1284, which was connected to the server. Same type of process, right? That was utilized to probably be a modem to allow the IT personnel to call in and make changes to your server. And then we had these other, uh, I don't know what the nomenclature is, a data master. We had the outside phone, that one we do know, right? That's the, down, the, the one outside that we answer and it dials out. And then we have this Orange County Information Service, which is the 6760. So it's certainly possible to eliminate those. And when we do, you'll see in our comparison, we can eliminate that expense as well. One of the things that, that we were looking at you know, this year, um, so if we just have to use Frontier for a dial tone, we have to have a landline, correct, uh, coming into the building. Uh, that's what my understanding was several years ago. Um, so right now, Frontier's bill is pretty expensive into the police department. Uh, we do not use AT&T anymore. Um, we were being charged from AT&T. I don't know when that started in, in the village. I'm told it was from a um, somebody who used to work at AT&T. And... Um, so Frontier now handles a uh, long distance. Speaking with Frontier, they have cut their prices drastically at the Village Hall, okay? Um, they have more uh, line items than our budget does, Frontier. Um, so would we be eliminating Frontier for the most part? Um, would we have to use them at all like Rich and, uh, you know, Paul was asking, well, can we just go to Spectrum with something like this? Well, so let's so let's go back. So so if we look at the, uh, I guess the diagram will explain it best and then we can get into the financial aspect, right? But our goal is to utilize the newer technology and, and eliminate Frontier wherever possible. Spectrum we're using really just as an internet connection to our cloud. So this is okay. really an internet connection like the old Roadrunner type that connects to the building. And then all of our you know, dial tones really still live up here on the cloud. So we're just using this as a, a transport to get the, the phones to communicate with the phone system. So today the phone system lives up in the, the old locker room upstairs. And so the phones themselves communicate upstairs to the locker room. Tomorrow, the phones are communicating up, you know, out through the internet using a spectrum connection because it's the least expensive right now, all the way to the phone system that lives in the cloud. Now, the benefit of that is as we spoke, Number one, we're eliminating all those lines that we had for the chief's private line, for the sergeant's private line, for the rollovers and all those things. And I'll show you the price point is you know, better than what you um, are we're getting with Frontier. Now our bills, we, we started this process with the chief back in August. So the copy of the bills that we had from Frontier, if you've made changes from August, we, we're not privy to that. So the bills that we were provided were back within the August timeframe. Um, but yeah, the, the only thing that we're leaving behind are things that we have no control over, which are those dedicated lines for like the server and those elements. So uh, it would be our goal to eliminate Frontier because of the you know, amount of budget items and the things that they charge and how they charge. All right, and supposedly there, um, well, I got some, some mail about um, in chapter, you know, bankruptcy. So I don't know how solid Frontier is. Okay. Let me talk a little bit about it too. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's, we've for years, I mean, it's just, uh, and as a chief mentioned, we, it's, um, it, it's, it's the way of the future kind of to move things mm -hmm. toward the cloud. Although we do have, you know, some customers that still want premise-based solutions with cloud-based dial tone, like hospitals and such. And we still, we still deploy those. Let me talk a little bit about, uh, and, I'm, and I obviously with some of the questions, I'm taking a little bit more time, but let me talk about some of the benefits of what it is that we're providing, although you've seen the diagram, and it might clear up some of the other uh, questions that you may already have. So 
with this type of design, it is now becomes really the first phase of that single village solution, just geographically dispersed. So although we're starting with the police department, we know that we can add village hall or DPW at any time, even if they move there or they don't. And we can have that three digit dial. And we can see that, you know, the mayor is on the phone from the chief's office and vice versa, even mm -hmm. though they might be in separate buildings, right? So it does work toward that overall master plan. The system is easy to use, but with that, you know, we provide in-depth training. That's real face-to-face -face training, not uh, just a, a booklet or a YouTube video here. Try this, you know, it's people behind the scenes that will provide that training for you. Um, we do this on a fixed expense. Uh, it's budget friendly. So we, we're doing this with no CapEx. Um, again, it's a redundant system that's, that's cloud-based, not only within the data center itself, but even across country. So we're, we're operating when there's power outages and even service outages. We have that built-in disaster recovery and continuity, you know, you know, hitting that safety concern that when, you know, we have that flood or the fire or the, the, the lines going out of service, right? It won't impact us because as long as we can get some internet connectivity from your cell phone or from your home or wherever you're working, right? To be able to make and receive phone calls. It is the latest technology uh, available. Our goal is to elimination, uh, eliminating the high priced copper services. We're increasing your capacity by 150% on the inbound outbound side, still while reducing expenses. We're providing multiple calls for the private lines before the chief could get one call, one call only on the private line, even though you're paying nearly close to $30 for that line. Now we can get as, almost as many calls as we have. Um, the recording integration with Goose Town is uh, something we're doing already with uh, the town of Wallkill. So the town of Wallkill's uh, police system is going in actually tomorrow. We've done their phased system over the last few years, and that's the last piece. They want to do PD last. So we've already, it's not something that's new to us on how we integrate the newer technology to the uh, Goose Town platform. And um, so it is certainly something that we can do. Um, to that point, I, I just want to check my notes. I know we talked about that. I, I, there was, um, there may have been a, a, a small investment or you just upgraded. And I would just want to double check to make sure there's no hidden fees associated with Goose Town. And I know we, Chief, we spoke about that. I'm just gonna have to go back to my notes. I just wanna make sure we're, we're clear. We don't wanna have any additional expenses with Goose Town around that. We spoke about it, but I don't think there was, but I can double check with Goose Town. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll double check as well. I know we, we looked at that and just to make sure. Um, we've got voicemail for every user on the system. We've got those traditional phone features, right? As I mentioned, no impact to the IT infrastructure. Near limitless growth, you can, you know, if you wanted to connect in with the town of Blooming Grove, whom we're also talking to for the last several years, and is also a client of ours, you could, not that you necessarily want to, but we could make one system uh, if you wanted to. Um, we're gonna limit the investment by reusing your existing cabling. Um, we have the ability, obviously, not only get voicemail, but have them delivered to email. I know it sounds, you know, everybody gets that, but again, the police department doesn't have that today. We've got caller ID compatibility that's instant. So today it's antiquated, right? It's between the first and second ring, just like at home. We're waiting for that phone to ring. Don't answer it yet. Let's see who it is. We see who it is. Um, now it's instant. The moment the phone rings, it's already available and there's no delay on the other end. So today it's you know up to two, maybe even three rings for the caller uh, into the police department until the actual phone rings because we don't ring the phones today until the caller ID is available. So again, touching that safety concern, time is of the essence. The moment the phone rings, there's no delay to the outside call or, or to the display of the phone or to the ringing. We've got this mobility software that's built into it with every user. We can transfer call to any number. We talked about the next generation cloud-based fax. No busies, not that we're doing a lot of faxing, but we have no more busies anymore. So you can receive multiple faxes at the same time and outbound fax at the same time. We're gonna retain all your existing numbers. We're gonna elim eliminate the chief's unused fax line that we uncovered that was still there, but uh, that we're paying for that we don't need anymore. We're going to push the caller ID that you want people to see, which is typically the main number of the police department. Today, it's up to four to four or five different lines. So if the, the dispatcher made a call out on line three, the caller ID people will see is actually the caller ID of line three. And that's not what we're marketing on our cars. And, and so today we live in that caller ID world. People may not see it. And guess what? They slide it to voicemail. Now, every time you make a call, we're going to push the caller ID of the main list number unless you want it to be something else. Um, 
all our, all the equipment that we're providing is redeployable uh, should you, the department decide to move. So it's not anything that's specific other than a component that we're gonna provide you to make this work at no charge. We've got uh, basic system reporting built in, ongoing software assurance. Anytime you put software on an iPhone today, you know iPhones change quickly. So, so does the software that resides on it. Now we're getting software and the phone system. The last time the phone system that you have was upgraded was probably year 2000 for the 2000 uh, switch as we called it, right? That's probably the last time it was ever upgraded. Um, now we've got, uh, you know, upgrades happening twice, three times a year. Trained and certified staff, a lot of things the system can do. We do this on a fixed monthly budget. So let me show you quickly what we're providing. Obviously, we've got the equipment, we've got the phones, we've got all these things that you saw in the picture. Um, the investment, which we've discounted, is $269.69 a month with no money out of pocket. Um, and again, it's all parts, all labor, normal wear and tear for the duration. So it's based on a 60-month term. We're providing all the parts, all the labor, and all the services behind it. This phone breaks, this door box breaks. Any service call that we have for the next five years is on us. Our service provider, which is Zoltis for those for the actual dial tone and that cloud-based PBX is $249.89 a month. Um, that gives us the inbound outbound capacity as well as the, the phone system, the voicemail, the recording, the, you know, the mobile licenses, all those things. And then our fax line is $25 a month. So what I've done is I put together this little service comparison that takes all the information and again, took the snapshot of what the last bill we had, which was in August and compares the two and, and pulled up this little service delivery comparison. So with the 14 lines that you had, um, you know, before taxes and surcharges, and if you ever looked at the Frontier phone bill, there's no shortage of uh, taxes and surcharges, even for a municipality. You were paying 383.55, you were paying up to $437 for your local long distance service. You used to have a maintenance agreement with us. Hopefully there's still a budget item for maintenance services should we have to come out in a time material basis. I put this in as an example, obviously to help our cause, but it is legitimate that back in 2018, 19, we did have a maintenance agreement and that budget item was about $74 a month. So all in before taxes, surcharges, current budget should be around 511.22. Now, again, this is where you'll see if we can eliminate these dedicated lines, it only helps the cause. We still feel you're gonna leave five behind, but you might be able to eliminate all of them. If you are, great. Um, but that's 136.98. The Zoltis, which is the cloud-based PBX and the actual inbound outcome capacity was that line number for the last from 249.89. Your fax is 25. Our spectrum connection is 65. And ITC and the equipment and, our, and the services is 269.69, all in 610. The net investment to the village is $98 a month. So now let me go back to the questions that you may have. I know I went through it quickly. It's a lot of information, but I know I was a little going over on time. What questions can I can I help address? One more thing I can add, uh, Keith, is right now if someone does call Washingtonville Police looking for uh, New Windsor Police, for example, we get a lot of phone calls about something that happens on Tolman Road, um, or Route 94, or even Blooming Grove. We ask. We basically take their information and forward it to Blooming Grove or New Windsor by calling them, or we ask the person calling to hang up and call the police department. Correct me if I'm wrong, Kate, this system, we will be able to transfer the live call to another department? Yeah, we can transfer call anywhere at any time and even stay on the call as a supervised uh, transfer, meaning it's not just a blind transfer whereby we transfer to Blooming Grove or E911 or wherever you want to transfer it we can you know, preface that call as the dispatcher of the other side answers the call. Hey, it's, it's, uh, it's the chief, I'm calling, I've got Keith on the line, he's on Tolman Road, we need some assistance, I'm gonna transfer you the call. So that's absolutely built in feature of function of the system. Like right now, it's so, like I said, if you're calling a drunk driver and you're on Tolman Road coming into Washingtonville, but you're in New Windsor, or maybe vice versa, you're leaving, we basically give them New Windsor's phone number and hang up on them. Sometimes they, you know, they lose connection. They don't want to call again. Um, so this would definitely help in those situations, plus many others, but just one to talk about. Agreed. These figures, uh, no, on, this screen, these figures on this screen here are based on the most current bill you said? 
Well, the, the the last bill that we had from Frontier was uh, August, so I and I do have my fine print, which kind of says that. But uh, August 2020 is the last bill we had from Spectrum and Frontier from, from and that's we started this conversation, I think, prior to COVID, and then you know after COVID we got the bills in August, so uh, that's the last updated bills that we had. Can I ask a question? Certainly. Um, I'm adding your numbers under the proposed monthly service and it's not adding up unless I'm missing something. I'm getting 746.56. You may be right. Let's take a look. Well, would that be nice if I could make this a little nicer? Yeah, actually, it's. Uh, Actually, I'm getting a much higher number myself. I want to go back and check that. Let me give me a second. But you're right. And that only makes this investment actually uh, uh, less than what you're currently paying, really. If that math is correct, let me then I'll take a quick look at that. Any other questions while I'm uh, just taking a quick look at that? One more thing I just want to add is uh, it would also help us. For example, if I'm out in the field or detectives are out in the field, need to contact a victim or a suspect from their personal cell phone number, they could use the app and call showing the police department number. A lot of times right now, if an officer or anybody wants to call somebody, suspect, witness, they come back to the police station because they don't want their personal cell phone number to show up on the caller ID. Obviously, you can block it and things like that, but most people feel more comfortable showing up as a police department phone number than their private cell phone number. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, so the ability to to make a call from the field and and, and whether it's from your, you know, a phone that we we implement or not um, is really useful because again, the caller ID is always the the the, uh, the location, right? It's always uh, the the main office, if you will, the, the police department. So, you know, someone's if the app was deployed, even on someone's private cell phone, you know, an officer's private cell phone, he could make a call on behalf. If again, there's permissions and passwords and those types of things associated with it, um, but that certainly would help help uh, them to to do that. And the last thing you want, everyone captures caller ID is have an officer's number now available to someone that you're dialing, and they start calling that number back, right? Mm -hmm. I, um you only have the latest of August for Frontier? Correct. Um, I'll have ready for you tomorrow. I'll send it tomorrow, Frontier from August until the latest bill, November, um, as well as Frontier. Okay, so I, I think we could come up with a more accurate number. Okay. Okay. That's uh, Mayor, I only gave them August is because uh, I think like that's when we started working on this project, um, and we ever, haven't really updated it since. So going back to there was a, I think uh, Valerie, you, you were up the, the question. There was a, a, a an issue with the uh, spreadsheet there, so I'm glad you caught that. But so the current base again on, on the August stuff, this will be a little bit changed based upon the new numbers. Um, the current investment is like eight hundred ninety-five dollars. The proposed investment is seven hundred forty-six dollars right now, so we're looking at a, a net savings of one hundred and forty-eight twenty-one. Now, if you just if you just entered into a new agreement with Frontier to lower your your price point, and you've entered into a term agreement, we're going to have a challenge because they're going to probably want their money for the duration of the agreement that you sign. So hopefully, it's a month-to-month -month agreement. If it's not, then you know we don't need Frontier. We don't we want to eliminate them. So if we've entered into any type of term agreement. And we just checked, Chief, I believe that we weren't in any term agreement, I believe. So hopefully that won't be an issue. Mayor, I, I spoke to L uh, Linda and just asked her. She wasn't aware. Um, I don't think I was able to speak to you about it if we did lock ourselves into any long distance agreement with Frontier. No, no, the, it was no agreement at all. It was just a correction on their part. Good. All right. So if that's really the number, then maybe I don't have to send you the other 
statement. Yeah, I mean, so this is, you know, I obviously <laughs> this is the uh, this is the new number again using the August uh, August uh, mm -hmm. amount, but, um, which is a good place to be. Okay, um, we have our next meeting, a regular meeting. Uh, I don't have my calendar on the 19th of January. Are these numbers still good until then? Absolutely. And I'll send over mayor just a copy of this uh, updated slide. Again, Valerie, thanks for catching that. Um, no I'll, I'll send that over to you, uh, to the chief right now, and then uh, he can distribute that uh, right away. I did forward Keith's email uh, right at at the start of the meeting with yes. all the documents. So. Great. Any other questions or thoughts? Thank you. Great. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good night. <laughs>
Can you just change, and I don't know, Paul, if you had the answer for this. Can you just change the reader of an existing meter? No. No. It has it to be both, just, huh? It can't just, well, and, and the ones that have the dial reads, you, you want to change them. That's why we do an upgrade, because the meters that they're using now are better meters than the meter that's in there. The, the new meters in the residential areas that were, were the, are, are, are the electromagnetic ones. Uh, these, the older meters are still uh, more mechanical. They still tend to slow down, and uh, and not uh, and not read accurately. So when we change, if you can't just change the the uh, the dial read. It's got to be a complete upgrade. Okay. And, you know, a, a good point on on that is, and myself included, I know I have to change the main valve in my house. It's been forty some odd years now, and I'm afraid to touch that thing because I, I don't know if it's going to turn off and stay off, or turn on and stay on, or just come off in my hand. So a lot of, and that's 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 a problem with a lot of the upgrades is that they can't change the meter because people can't turn the water off in the house. But we we have to maintain the equipment, and then if we turn it off in the street and that valve breaks, that still belongs to us, belongs to the homeowner. Uh, so, and those valves have been sitting there for 40 some odd years too, in a lot of cases. So in both cases, uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I don't, you know, I, I know I got to get mine done. And I, I mean, I think I just, up, I upgraded my, my insurance where I have service line coverage. Now my homeowners added on service line. So I'm maybe not so afraid to turn off the valve at the, uh, at the curb if I had to knowing that I have at least have insurance because that's a lot of money, you know, changing out a curb box. All right. I had spoken to uh, UB Max on, on um, Thursday of last week. Um, if we spoke about getting iPads or pads to use, Rich, if you want to look into it, um, just has to be an Android base pad. Uh, hopefully with the camera. Uh, we had somebody call today saying, how do you know um, that that was my reading? Or how do they know that was our reading? So it's able to even take pictures of the, the, um, the reader. Okay, for storage. I think it was uh, up to five quarters for each meter you know, that we could take pictures of, of the dial read, obviously with the with, with the touch read, we can. So I don't know how many we want to look to, to purchase. Uh, once we have them, we have to contact UB Max and they'll upload the program onto these meters, uh, onto these pads rather. So we are essentially ending the books, okay? Um, and it would be done in, in real time. So I think we're able to take care of that. So hopefully we get a lot of the questions answered that everyone seems to have, okay? Um, questions are good, accusations are not. Um, so um, what was, do what that. Was today's question, how do they know that that was the reading on my meter? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I mean, on the touch uh, read, yeah. it should be exactly what's on the meter. Yeah, and another uh, question that came in uh, later on before I left was um, they changed the meter outside the house. Okay, and the meters are inside the house. Uh, they might have changed the reader. And if they change the reader, do they have to change the meter? You answered that question. So um, I think they, they might have wanted to just change um, the meter. Didn't happen. Okay. Um, but Scott from JCL has been given emails um, today also uh, regarding this. Hopefully tomorrow we'll have an answer for these the two residents that have questions um, and, and we'll take care of it. Well, I just want to thank you for doing a phenomenal job really with, with the water, um, answering the people's questions and um, yeah, it's a lot of work. So I thank you for that. It's, it's, 
sometimes it's fun and you get to meet a lot of people. And yeah, you know, some days I see how much fun you're having and, and I think it's unfair that right. you're having more fun point. than, <laughs> you know, but thank you. Um, and you know, before we go to uh, letter C, uh, I did thank the chief for a great job with his department. I also want to thank uh, Chris Martino for a great job he's doing with the DPW. So Chris, thank you. Um, village election information, Trustee Ladat. Um, I've been following NICOM and as of January 15th, we have to vote for, um, to adopt our village election date. There he goes, Paul has it. Um, since our next meeting is not until January 19th, I'm asking if the board can vote on this this evening. Um, let's see, we need to adopt a resolution designating Tuesday, March 16th, 2021 for the Village of Washingtonville election. The village election will be held at Village Hall on 9 Fairlawn Drive in Washingtonville, New York from 12 noon to 9 p.m. So if, we can, if we can get a motion to adopt this resolution. Now, if we wanted to change the times, if we wanted to go earlier. Uh, we can. You don't think it's that simple? Uh, I have to check the village law. I don't think. I think the times are fixed. Okay. Just hum a song or something while I look. <laughs> <laughs> One of the ah! questions that <laughs> who's singing? Larissa is. One what do you the, think is singing? One of the comments that I think we've all heard, I leave for work at 6.30 in the morning and I don't get home until eight o'clock at night. I think the other problem might be the election inspectors. So I don't know how Could much. Be, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. I think Paul is right. Question. I think it's already fixed. Yeah. Um, but I will not. The June, if, they, if there's a June vote, well, not that we have one as of yet, but there are villages with a June vote and it's the same thing, 12 to nine. Oh, what it, so it might what it be says, it might be a village. You know, just reading what it says in here uh, from from NICOM, it says that uh, <clears throat> last day for the board of trustees to adopt a resolution adopting designating Tuesday, March sixteenth, the day of the village election, identifying the polling place and the hours the polls will be open. Polls must be open from at least twelve noon until nine p.m. Ah, okay. So, and then, you know, I'd have to look, you'd have to look up election law, but uh, <clears throat> it says they must be open from at least, least. 12 noon until 9 p.m. And I, hmm. I, I mean, that covers the people that come home from work. I mean, a lot of people aren't going to work yet, anyhow. That's true. The last election we had, what, 75 people? Yeah. Yeah. And there's also absentee ballot, don't forget. That's true too. No, there's really no excuse, but we know that. They have to request the absentee ballot, right? We're not sending out ballots. No, yeah. they have to request it, yeah. I've heard that was done um, not too long ago, in November. Um, so if someone wants to make a motion, so keep really everything the way it is. Yes. Okay, hold on. Before you make the motion here under section 2 214 of the village law, uh, within 10 days, <laughs> he's singing the song. Section 64 of town law, adjoining those by the between the hours of 12 o'clock noon and 9 o'clock in the evening, and on a day not less than 20, so it's 12 to 9. Mm. Section 2-214. Okay, do. Yep. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Okay, motion by Trustee Kalor, seconded by Deputy Mayor Lang. Roll call. Trustee Kalor. Yes. Trustee Sampson. Yes. Trustee Ladato. Yes. 
Deputy Mayor Lang and Mayor Bucco. Yes. Okay, so moved. Five zero. Thank you, Valerie, for all that information. Thank you, Paul, for um, trying to sing to us while you were looking for what was happening. Um, any other questions, comments? Okay, so we'll um, plan on being live next Monday for the budget hearing, uh, the first one. Uh, if it changes, like I said, I'll get word out um, to the uh, to everyone by Friday. And what I'm going to do is just see what other villages, towns are doing uh, regarding live meetings. It's not getting better, from what I understand. Uh, Trustee Sampson, you would know more than I do on that. Um, Did you watch uh, CNN tonight? Announced that that uh, new variant strain is in New York State now. You know, the uh, one that is more easily transmitted. Not looking forward to the next few weeks. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, 118 is a holiday. You know that, right? Does that make a difference for the second budget hearing? Oh. Um, is, oh that's Martin Luther King? Luther King Day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You want to make it the Tuesday? I. Well, we already have a meeting then. Oh, good lord! So you want to do it unless before? We, unless we make our meeting six and seven, that we we could um, start the budget hearing at six, mm -hmm. five thirty. Is that is that good for everyone? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so we'll move it to the Tuesday, January eighteenth. Nineteenth. Nineteenth. Yeah. Nineteenth. I'm sorry for um, 530 budget hearing number two and as soon as that is over we'll go into our uh regular meeting schedule meeting what what time is that going to budget 530 Do you want me to make a separate Zoom if we have that or just do one long Zoom? If we have to do by Zoom, you want me to make a separate? Or it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Is, is that, if we go at 530, is that giving everyone, all the residents time to uh, get home and no. Yeah. Okay. So, so six o'clock, six o'clock and then start our meeting at 730. Unless we make our meeting, the budget meeting. We could do that. We could do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's start at seven o'clock. Okay. We'll have our regular meeting and then right after the regular meeting, um, continue into the budget. Yes. We'll limit if, if residents have questions to three minutes, like everyone else has. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. We, we should be able to uh, get into the budget hearing by seven thirty, eight 8 o'clock, the latest. Okay. Um, we have to keep stressing that if, if residents have a question regarding budget, to please email. I only had my email down, but please feel free. I could give out everyone's email. Um, every question is going to be answered. All right. Some people just can't make meetings, but they could find time during the week or weekend to email a question. And we could answer those questions during the meeting. A quick question regarding the budget hearing. Yes. Um, since the work sessions and the uh, regular meetings have to be on Zoom, how can we hold budget meetings in person? Wouldn't it even be more crowded? Hmm. Shouldn't they be on Zoom as well? Are we allowed to limit? Or you can't, you can't deny anybody? Or budget. Yeah, I would think Zoom has better participation. And you can share the screen. Yep. 
great example of it tonight. I mean, you might be able to see it better. Yeah. Um, I have no problem with that. We can make that decision now that it's going to be a Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be at Village 12. Um, Luis, I don't know if you could be because you're the tech person. I'd have to connect to the internet. Yeah. Okay. Or I can have yeah. the big guy here <laughs> set it up. <laughs> okay. I, I think that's a great idea. So, all right. So let's make the decision now. Next Monday's meeting will be Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, the Tuesday after that, the 19th of January, will be Zoom. Mm -hmm. and we'll come up with other dates that we need. Um, I'm sure looking at probably another three or four more days um, to adopt the budget so we can send it up to Albany in, in a timely fashion. If you want to pick out the dates tomorrow and send them to me and I'll just set the Zoom up if we... I could, I could do yeah. that. Is, does anyone have dates that they can't be? Nope. nope. Um, Let me check my social calendar. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> we could go the um, later on that week or we could go the 20, um, no, I think we have to go later on that week. So what, the 22nd? That's a Friday, maybe the 21st. Mm -hmm. We have to have this adopted by uh, oh, February oops. 1, I believe, right? Yeah, February 1st. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so 21, we agree? Yes. 21. Okay. Seven o'clock? Yes. Okay. And we could 25th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, seven o'clock, 28th. Mm -hmm. And they are also tentative if, in case we get it done beforehand. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So we're looking at the 11th, the yeah. 19th, 21st, 25th, 28th. Um, of January. Mm -hmm. Are you any, is the court open now or did they close again? Uh, the, the court is uh, not open. All right, so no conflict. No. And it, Rich, I, I like your optimism if we could be done by the 28th, but if we have to go over the weekend, we, we can. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a tough year. You know, we have a lot of lost revenue with um, Orange County, Orange County, lost revenue with the schools. Mm -hmm. um, but we look good. Not great, we look good. We want to look great. <laughs> I look good. You you do. That's what I was getting to. I, I was just looking at my notes to <laughs> tell Rich he looks good. <laughs> How long is that tree gonna stay up? That was to you. My tree is up too. My tree is still up. Yeah, I'm keeping mine up to Valentine's Day. My little one wants to keep it up until it, it, Valentine's. Day. It's called the Epiphany. Come on, Thank Paul. You. After that, it comes down. Rich is right. It is. That's Wednesday, right? Yeah, La Befana in Italian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Paul, did you put a tree up? Yeah, I took it down. Okay. <laughs> what the day before Christmas, or you kept it up for Christmas? Give it away. 
<laughs> okay, uh, any other questions, concerns, comments? Nope. All right, uh, motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Second it. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your night. Thank Bye. you, you too. Thank Bye. you.